takes flesh. Might be a way to get at well, that. Pre- well, and, and uh, the thing is, we, we do see this and it does grip us because movies, like we see representations of this all the time. In, uh, in my new book, I talk a fair bit about Harry Potter. And yeah. you no, know, Harry Potter is definitely an archetype taken Christ figure yeah. taken flesh well clearly he's in battle with satan himself obviously yeah. i mean and and she has an unbelievably profound mythological imagination and the thing that's so fascinating about all of that is that because her mythological imagination is spot on she captivated the entire globe and and produced yeah. you know this immense storehouse of wealth and dominated the entertainment landscape for a decade and you know people don't take that seriously but it's a it's a great mystery should, to though, watch yeah. that. They're, absolutely, they should. It's it's yeah. a, it's a phenom- You know, anything that grips people's attention like that is obviously worth paying attention to. By yeah. <laughs> back from the dead. Well, um, you do have a you do have the following argument, which is that it isn't clear which is harder to believe, whether that happened or whether people made it up. Because if they made it up, that was really something. And that, that does strike me quite frequently reading the New Testament. Yeah. There, are, there are lines in there that hit so hard, you think, hmm, it isn't obvious to me how someone could have just thought that up. So, right. and there is that, well, and, and Jung, Carl Jung, um, who I greatly admire, you know, he believed, I think, in the same way that C.S. Lewis did that, and he doesn't talk about this that much, but that there is this archetypal mythological pattern of the dying and resurrecting yeah. hero that has this psychological reality, which is extraordinarily deep, yeah. but that that archetype was realized once in history. And that's right. the fully realized. So it, it, yeah. it came from the, the, the mythic realm, let's say, the realm of eternal truth, the realm of pattern, instinctive yeah. pattern for that matter, and was fully realized at one point in history. And you, you might think, well, if it's going to be fully realized, it has to start somewhere. You know, it, it can't right. start everywhere at the same time. Or Right. Right. What does an archetype look like when it takes flesh? Might be a way to get at well, that. Pre- well, and, and, and the thing is, we, we do see this and it does grip us because movies, like we see representations of this all the time. In, in my new book, I talk a fair bit about Harry Potter. And yeah. you no, know, Harry Potter is definitely an archetype. Take, Christ figure. Yeah. Taken flesh. Oh, well, clearly he's in battle with Satan himself, obviously. Yeah. I mean, and, and she has an unbelievably profound mythological imagination. And the thing that's so fascinating about all of that is that because her mythological imagination is spot on, she captivated the entire globe and, and produced yeah. you know, this immense storehouse of wealth and dominated the entertainment landscape for a decade. And, you know, people don't take that seriously, but it's a it's a great mystery should, to though, watch yeah. that. They're, absolutely, they should. It's it's yeah. a, it's a phenom- You know, anything that grips people's attention like that is obviously worth paying attention to. By yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, Emma, right, Lewis called them good dreams, right? So all the sort of archetypal anticipations of the gospel, the the good dreams of the race. Um, or do you the Jungian? I love Jung too. But what happens if that archetype of the person perfectly pleasing to God? You know, Kant's language. What would happen if that archetype became flesh? And indeed, that's how they put it. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Well, I think that's also the question we should each be asking ourselves in our own lives. Yeah, quite It's like, well, who could we be? And you say, well, you don't have to ask yourself that question. It's like, well, good luck with your conscience then. You should be another Christ. That's That's the objection to the self-created person. It's like... yeah. The, the the idea that you can create your own values is well good luck right try good luck.